Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use multiple timelines in DaVinci Resolve, and I'm going to show you why it's such a good idea to use a multi-timeline workflow, especially on larger projects. Let's take a look. Before we get started, I just wanna give a huge shout out to the J-Cuts community. All of the people listed here have unlocked things like daily editing tips, live editing training, discounts on merch, and more. If you wanna get these things for yourself, become a channel member today by clicking the join button below this video, the link in the description, or the card above. And with all of that out of the way, Let's get started. You probably already know that you can create multiple timelines in a DaVinci Resolve project. You also probably know how to do it, but did you know that you can also add those timelines to another timeline the same as you would any other clip? No? Well, that's good because that's what we're talking about today. But first, let's talk about why you would want to do this in the first place. Really, there are three reasons. First is organization. When you have larger projects with a ton of video clips, it can be easy to get a little lost, and the more clips you add, it can be hard to find the clip that you're looking for if you need to make a change somewhere. By creating different timelines for different parts of your video, you can break down your projects into smaller chunks, making it easier to find what you're looking for, which can save you a ton of time in the editing process. The second reason is speed. DaVinci Resolve tends to get a little laggy when you have a timeline with a ton of video clips, color grades, and effects on it. When you break your projects down into multiple smaller timelines, you're only loading a portion of the clips at a time, allowing DaVinci Resolve to run just a little bit smoother. The last reason has to do with collaboration. Let's say you're working on a project and you're not the only editor, or maybe it's a client project and you need to send them periodic updates. By using multiple timelines, you can render out individual sections of a project to send to the other editors while you move on to the next section, or you can send bite-sized chunks to the client for review instead of continuously rendering out the entire project. These scenarios have more to do with client work than if you're just making videos for YouTube, but it's still pretty cool if you ask me. Okay, now that we know the why, let's look at the how. I've got a project open in DaVinci Resolve. This is actually the sound design crash course I just put out a few days ago. You can see that I have a few timelines here. One is for intro and the channel member shout out, and then I have a timeline for each talking head section and each screen recording section. I also have a timeline called final, which we'll dive into in a bit. You'll also notice that all of these timelines are in their own separate bin, which isn't necessary per se, but it's a good way to keep track of all the timelines in your project. Let's call it a bonus tip. Okay, first off, if you don't know how to create a timeline in DaVinci Resolve, that's easy. Just go to File, New Timeline, give the title a name, make sure all your settings are the way that they're supposed to be, and click Create. Okay, now let's say that all of my individual timelines are complete and it's time to assemble the final product. Let's open up our final timeline and then start dragging the other individual timelines in from the media pool. And you'll see that I'm just adding them to this final timeline like I would any other video clip and for the most part, they even act like a video clip. So I can trim them, overlap them, put them on different tracks. You get the idea. You'll also notice that there's only one audio clip with these timelines, and I wanted to touch on that for just a second. It's important to edit the audio in each individual timeline, because once you bring them into the final timeline, you'll only have that one audio clip that represents all of the audio clips in the individual timelines. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Quick bonus tip though, if you want to edit all of your audio in the final timeline, you can do that. You can decompose the audio clip in place and then all of your audio clips will show up in that final timeline, but be careful that can get just a, a little bit messy. The only exception to this is the master audio track. You'll want to save any edits you plan on doing to that track for the final timeline, otherwise it's going to get a little confusing. Okay, so all of our section timelines are in the final timeline. Now let's say that I need to edit something in one of those sections. Instead of having to hunt down the clip in the middle of a huge mess of clips, I can just open up the section timeline that I need and there's a whole lot less to work with. And no matter what I do, it will be reflected in the final timeline. I don't really have to mess with that at all. Okay, let's talk about color grading for a second. Just like with audio, you're going to want to color grade inside of your section timelines instead of your final timeline. 
The only exception to this is if your grade is going to apply to every single clip in every single timeline, which if you're anything like me is almost never the case. Now let's say you have a grade on one timeline and you need to apply it to clips in other timelines. There are three ways to do this. The first is to use a master timeline. I'll be putting a video out about this soon, but in the meantime, my friend Billy actually put out a great video about how to create and use a master timeline to grade your footage. I'll link that below. The second is to use groups. Again, there's a video about this coming soon, but in essence, you can create a group of clips, apply a grade to that group, and then when you move on to another timeline, you can just add those clips to the group that you created previously. It's really simple. It's actually the way that I usually do it. The third way is to create a power grade and just apply that to all of the clips that need it in all of the timelines. I just made a video about that, actually. I'll link that in the description below in the pinned comment and right here. And with that, for more tools, tips, and tricks that will make you a better video editor, make sure to subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.